Thank you. Uh, I'm Scott Ames. This is Grant Mitchell. We're co-founders of Curbside Care. Uh, as he mentioned, we are the Uber for Healthcare, uh, allowing patients to request on-demand in-person appointments with doctors and nurse practitioners. Um, so just a little bit about us real quickly. And, and we thought it might be best to just quickly walk you through an overview of the company, and then we'll do a quick demo. Um, we currently have a web-based MVP, so there's not a, a terrible amount, uh, a terribly large amount to demo, but uh, it is still interesting to quickly look through the site. Uh, my background is in private equity investment banking. Just finished my first year at Wharton where I met, uh, met up with Grant. Yeah, so my name is Grant, uh, I'm the co-founder. Uh, my background is I got my MD at Penn. After that, started a company called Adhere Tech. We built smart pill bottles to track medication usage and monitor clinical trials and try and improve uh, compliance. After that, came back, got my MBA at Wharton, and now this is my full-time deal. And so it's principally just Grant and I right now with uh, some other advisory members. Uh, some of the team that actually built out Walgreens Take Care Clinics for, uh, from nothing to what it is today. Uh, they've been you know, fairly instrumental in, in both relationship development as, as well as guiding us on strategy. Um, so what is curbside care? Well, several months ago, I was in Washington, D.C. with my fiance. She came down with an ear infection. We really only had a few options. It was go to urgent care, ER, or do nothing. We ended up going to an urgent care center and waiting nearly three hours for a simple diagnose, treat, and prescribe. It was very frustrating, uh, taking nearly half my day on, on a short weekend. Uh, and it got me thinking, you know, there has to be a way to solve this. You think about the Grubhub and the seam seamless for food delivery, Uber for transportation. Uh, why hasn't this happened in, in healthcare? You know, I'm not the only person that's feeling this way. Is there a way to solve it? And curbside care is that solution, allowing patients to request on-demand in-person appointments when and where they want it, whether it's their home, hotel, or office. So what's the problem? Uh, we're in a market with existing supply and existing demand, but no way to connect the two. On the supply side, you have shift-based practitioners, uh, medical doctors, and, and nurse practitioners uh, who are looking for additional hours and income and who don't have an easy way to find it. And on, on the demand side, you have significant segments of the consumer population who value their time and convenience and who are frustrated with the long and unpredictable wait times associated with health care. So again, curbside care provides a value proposition by bridging this marketplace. We provide practitioners with the option, but not the obligation, to make additional income, provide appointments to these patients, and on the patient side, solving the inconvenience of these uh, long and unpredictable wait times by bringing the practitioner to them. Uh, we, we're past the, the research phase, but this is you know, something that we like to show, and, and one of the things that we did uh, towards our step of, of MVP and, and failing fast. Uh, over 50 practitioners that we uh, interviewed, you know, 47 were interested in signing up or, or said they would sign up. A lot of positive feedback, both on the patient and the practitioner sign, uh, side of the marketplace, uh, really kind of uh, uh, reinforcing our, th our uh, theories on, on why this should exist. And so here's an illustrative per visit revenue model. It is an out-of-pocket model currently, uh, and we are doing A-B testing on the price points. Uh, importantly, you know, it moves from 100 to 150 in our A-B tests for a nurse practitioner visit, 2 to 250 for an MD. Of that, the practitioner sees 75 or 150 as an NP or MD, and then curbside care uh, receives the rest. Uh, and importantly, we cover medical supplies, we cover malpractice insurance for our practitioner, and then the payments processing. We try and make it as seamless as possible for both the consumers and the practitioners. So I'll, uh, what we're showing you guys is, is basically our investment deck that we, that we do to VCs and angels and whatnot, um, uh, but aside from a, a few slides removed. So I'm going to give you kind of the, a tone uh, that is not so much that, but describe what these slides uh, entail. So this is, you know, we're showing our market size, right? It's, and, it's, and the great thing about healthcare is that there's any way you twist these numbers, you can show them that it's huge. And if you can nail around the edges, you, uh, you've got a, a decent uh, addressable market. For what we did, we looked at what we're cross-section with. That's the primary care market. 
but also the urgent care market and um, the emergency market where people are going to the emergency rooms where they should not have. It was actually something that could have been provided by us instead. If we cross section that with people that are going to be paying out of pocket, looking at the certain um, you know, profiles for uh, income, and we, we, we look at a $20 billion market total that, that we think that we can address in the United States. A hundred million of that uh, we think is in Philadelphia alone. So. Um, when you look at the people seeing this as an investable uh, concept, you know the, the market size is definitely not something that keeps them out of the game. So then once we uh, come up with this concept, this idea, we've got to actually figure out how we're going to make it happen, right? So how do we, how, how do we go to market? Uh, first, we're going to build the supply, then we're going to build the demand. And the building the supply side of things, this is what this slide shows you. We can go out to doctors individually, or we can go try and get them all in groups. The individual tactic is, you know, simply going to educational institutions like Penn, they're graduating MDs, nurse practitioners, or personal relationships, referrals, um, things like that. Any way that you could possibly think of to contact a doctor is what we're trying to do. Um, the other side of that is an enterprise solution where we can go to a entire health system and say, let me expand the productive capacity of your current physician base and send them into the community. The value prop for them is that you know we can curb competition from urgent retail clinics in their area. Um, we can increase referrals into their system, and we can also improve the the lives and incomes of their uh, practitioners. So then, building demand, it's uh, nothing nothing novel there uh, uh, in in this regard. So. Either we go direct to consumer with you know Google ad campaigns. It's really nice that we can target you know certain zip codes. If we've got a doctor there, we want to drive um, you know appointments towards that person in in their locality so they can travel in a very short amount of time to get to them. In addition, we're going for corporate accounts as well. So think of you know a large company like Comcast or something that would provide this as a benefit to their uh, to their employees. So yeah, the, the competitive landscape is interesting in healthcare. You've got all sorts of people trying to provide cares in different modalities. I think that what is most uh, relevant to us is telehealth. Um, a lot of people say, well, why don't I just do a video? Well, I, there's, there's doctors that are never going to do videos, and there's uh, patients that are never going to do that. In addition to that, there's just the simple fact that a lot of the diagnosis occurs physically. And um, if without that, you have a higher uh, miss rate and more errors uh, that, you know, that happens in telehealth. As far as the on-demand side of things, that's where, that's where uh, our market really is. You can see us there at curbside care. There's only two other role players in it, and they're maybe three to four months ahead of us. Um, so that's encouraging because they're, they're very uh, they're solid teams. They're getting a lot of press and tech crunch and things like that. And so. Um, we're nipping on their heels and we're in different um, geographies, so we think there's room for a lot of people in the space and we're excited to see how it plays out. So yeah, that's uh, the, the final of the deck list that we're going to show you and I think from here we're going to take you through the website. And uh, Can you guys talk just a little bit about how the product works and what it looks like? And that's what we're going to do. You know, overall, I mean, and as many of you, I'm sure, have heard of, you know, the, the lean startup method, what we tried to do is, is test this as many times as we could as cheaply as possible. And so that started with interviews and surveys on both the consumer and practitioner side, and then it evolved into, okay, what does our real MVP need to look like uh, at, at the most, quote, minimal level possible? Um, and that we determined was a consumer and practitioner facing web page um, where people could interact, actually request appointments, and we could actually provide those appointments. So that's what we've done here. And you see our landing page here. You know, we provide on demand house calls. Whether you need care at home, hotel, or office, our practitioners can be there when and where you want. And on the, you know, the landing, the scrolling homepage, we just provide a little bit of information. As you can see right now, our pricing is actually set at 99 and 199. Again, we are A-B testing that currently. Um, we try and give a brief overview of, you know, what is curbside care? What are the value propositions? These are some of the conditions treated. They're going to be a lot of the things that you'd find at urgent or retail care. Um, I'd say the only thing that most urgent care centers provide that we are not providing is, is radiology. So if you go in for a broken bone or, or potential fracture, those types of things. Um, but we do provide you know quite a bit of things. So then if you are, say, a practitioner and you click here, a little bit more on, okay, you know, what exactly do you need to do to sign up? What do we provide? Well, you know, you can get real-time appointment requests. There's no obligations. Again, we provide the option, but not the obligation. Get additional income in your free time. These are some, some minimal uh, uh, kind of fill-in-the-blanks for the practitioners. 
Uh, and then because of you know some regulatory uh, obligations that we have, we go through a formal process of onboarding the practitioners before they can actually provide services. On the patient side, if you go here and you're requesting a house call, you'll see what pops up is this warning. And this is, you know, we are not trying to substitute for emergency care. And we want to be clear with that. You know, if, if you think you're having a heart attack, a stroke, um, some very serious issues, that's not what we want to be solving for. Uh, and, you know, we will uh, escalate those types of issues with patients. Um, for the more uh, prime or urgent or retail care type use cases, that's really where we want to be. Uh, and it's fairly simple, you know, from the patient side is, is inputting simple contact information, appointment request time, which can be now or at some point up to 24 hours in the future, and then some symptoms. You request an appointment. Um, and again, as I discussed, we're, we're at a true MVP stage where uh, our team is solving the back end. So we're connecting the patients to practitioners manually. Uh, the next uh, stage gate of our product, which is in process right now, will be a bit more seamless where the practitioners will fluid get the requests as they come through from patients. So, you know, that, that's the overview of, of our concept, really our strategy, and then a little bit on the product, but happy to answer any questions you may have. Question is, are you doing anything with the EMR? Uh, that's very much uh, our intention. So we want to uh, emphasize continuity of care, right? Um, and, and currently, urgent retail care really isn't doing that. Uh, it's a goal of ours. It's, it's in the, you know, product evolution, if you will. The yeah. question so, is, how are they complying with HIPAA compliance, given that they're collecting patient data? So it's a secure site, uh, secure database with login and credentials uh, required by both uh, everyone internally and the practitioners. Uh, for the first request to practitioners, it's anonymized data. It's uh, an overview of information sent out. If they accept the request, they'll then get uh, the more detailed patient information. question is, is there a review component plan for, I guess, for the practitioners? For onboarding them, I guess I'm not clear to as to what you mean. Patient experiences, yeah. feedback on patient experiences with specific practitioners. Yes, um, right now that's internally, and we manage that internally. Um, we we obviously want the patient experience to be as good as possible, and there's not only the type of onboarding process that you would see at a normal health system, the credentialing and verification, but also interviewing uh, and training program that we have in place with our uh, chief clinical officer who's based out of Boston. Uh, with that, you know, we, we'd like to think that, that we're providing the utmost level of care. They are the face of our company, um, but we understand, you know, if there are, are not uh, excellent experiences, we want to take care of those as quickly as possible, and, and we're making sure that we do. Good luck with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Question is, is the plan to expand into mental health services and assessments? The, I think yeah, the thing that gets exciting about this model is that what we're building is a platform that we can apply to uh, various aspects of, of healthcare. Um, we've spoken, have had inbound requests from specialists in, in various areas, everywhere from podiatry to physical therapy, um, psychiatry as well. What we're trying to do is execute well on our core focus. Uh, you know, there are obviously geographic expansion opportunities, and then think about um, specialist areas moving on from there. All right, maybe one or two more questions. Question is, what is the target customer for the demand side? It's a bit of a mix, um, and, and it's part of the trend that, that we're piggybacking on. So as you think about the consumer landscape, the, the landscape for the patient, user, consumer, however you want to think about them currently, um, if you were to go to urgent, so we're looking at use cases where primary care is not really an option, right? You're not, you're not going to be able to get a same-day primary care appointment. So your option is then urgent or retail care. If that's not near you, emergency care. Most plans, if you have a great plan, is going to be a $50 to $75 copay for an urgent or retail care and even more for emergency care. We're slightly above that for a higher convenience. Um, but then as you look at the trend of consumerization of healthcare, which is essentially just high deductible health plans, you're looking at individuals who are going to pay, have to pay the full out of pocket um, for these urgent care appointments. And this uh, results in a case where we're definitely price competitive and in some cases cheaper than, than the alternatives to the patient. It's not, I mean, it's, I guess the answer is it's a mix, right? There are going to be people who are used to, to concierge medicine, but we're hoping to eventually uh, be solving uh, our use cases largely with nurse practitioners who are skilled and have the experience and requisite uh, knowledge to solve these issues uh, at, a, uh, at a really valuable price point for the users.
Last question? In the right. I think you had your hand up. Right. So question is, is, which is more difficult, the, sorry, the practitioner that. market and finding practitioners and, nurse and uh, doctors or getting insurance companies on board? So to be clear, we are only out of pocket right now. Uh, we're not a payer back system. It's, you know, you use your credit card on the site through a secure portal. Um, that said, we have had discussions with uh, IBC uh, as well as others on the opportunity for uh, becoming a payer back system. For us in our stage of the life cycle from an administrative and, and cash flow perspective, it just doesn't make sense. Um, we don't need to be payer backed to succeed long term, but we would like to be. We would like to become a solution where uh, we are solving this issue for a greater number of, of patients in the ecosystem. Uh, what will be required for insurance companies to get on board is for us to prove out our theory that um, these are appointments that are coming on nights and weekends and that would otherwise be used for urgent retail care. Uh, you know, to, to be transparent, their concern is that patients will be substituting out of primary care for this at a higher price point. Um, and, and again, we don't want to be substituting for primary care. We think that we will not be, and we'd rather be substituting for the urgent and retail care.